Just like the previous shows, Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius was one of those shows that actually clicked with me. The Boy Genius, basically creating inventions that go horribly wrong, is not a very old, it's not a very, you know, new concept, pretty much. However, this concept actually works because it's Halloween based, and it's actually a pretty good one. What? Look in front of me. Oh, oh. Wait. wait a minute, who are you? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, he, he's not ready yet. Um, you know I got friends in, in like certain places. You could see uh, the monkey right there. His name is Jack. Uh, my head's in the, my left head. That's Jack right there. This bottom guy here is uh, Ethan, and then the uh, the big guy over there, the greeting the Adams family poster. I'll just turn the camera for you guys. That's uh, Charlie. Yeah, that's Charlie right there. <laughs> He's basically the best one. He's actually the best one because he actually he actually says hi in like these like uh, he closes his eyes there so. Hey, Charlie, say hi. Yeah, see? <laughs> he actually says hi on the camera, but that doesn't matter now. Let's turn the camera back to me, and let's talk about this episode here. So, yeah, let's get closer. The f so, unlike the f SpongeBob and Fairy Odd Parents, where I had the biggest amount of, like, you know, hold on these shows because they were my childhood a lot, Jimmy Neutron, you could say is like the black sheep of it. It was definitely like out of nowhere. It was trying to go, it was trying to be something else, but it also wanted to be the same as something like Dexter's Laboratory in a way with the smart kid. But it didn't really like, it clicked so well that I think, I don't know if Dexter's Lab would be good for me or not. I know people are probably going to say, you had watched Dexter's Lab? No, I haven't. I never watched all the other old Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network shows for that matter. So... I want to look at this one because this one episode gave me... I always think of this one thing. How could nobody make this exact same thing? In horror movies, nonetheless. Even comedies. I How is that even possible? Oh, that's just another experiment. Let's just close this curtain right here. <laughs> listen, listen. When you, when you actually dabble into stuff like, stuff like the occult and, you know... And, and like, um, experiments and stuff. You know how it goes. I never joined it. The hell's the matter with people these days? But I actually did enjoy this. I was still part of Nickelodeon. And that means I actually looked at this episode of The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Nightmare in Retroville aired October 29th, 2003. And I'm just going to put it out there. There are going to be so many references, so let's go on my right. No, that's not my right, that's my left. Let's go on my right, and let's put on the reference counter for, for good measure. Now that that's put on, let's continue the video. As the episode starts, Sheen says the most horrifying thing imaginable. I believe it or not, Sheen literally said this literally on the night of all nights. What are we going to be for Halloween? Not only did it give me shivers down my spine, but it almost, my ears almost just popped out of my skull. Did he really just say that on Halloween? You're supposed to have your costumes already. As the others are contemplating on what costumes they're going to wear, Jimmy actually is not going to be going trick-or-treating this year. <gasps> I don't know, Halloween's kind of for kids. Are you trying to break my heart, buddy? Are you really trying to break my heart? He's not ready. He's not ready. Jimmy takes the free candy part under consideration as he has created a Neutronic Monster Maker and uses Carl and Sheen as their test dummies. Sheen is turned into a werewolf while Carl is turned into a vampire. And the, the actual designs of them don't look too bad. I think the only thing that's goofy is Carl's little 
cape. But other than that, everything looks fine. Everything looks 100% and then they go off trick-or-treating. Until their dad comes in and he accidentally spins that wheel and what else happens? He turns into the Frankenstein monster. Other shenanigans ensue, but I also wanted to kind of talk about the references. <sighs> There's nothing like easing the spirits than turning off all your candles. And I have a lot of candles, even on the desk here. So, let's go for the references. The first reference was pretty much simple. A Frankenstein reference. There's a bunch of them. Jimmy being the mad scientist, which is also a reference to the 1925 the 1920 film, the, the Monster, which was a really, really interesting silent film. The other reference is like the Frankenstein laboratory everywhere, like everything that Jimmy has, his invention, which is like completely electricity everywhere, is a reference to Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory. And of course, Jimmy's dad, Hugh, Neutron, also is a reference to Frankenstein's monster because he, he basically transforms into the Frankenstein monster. There's references to Dracula, which is quite literally there's going to be a lot of a lot of these here. So clearly, I'm just going to bring the counter up while I'm talking in this one and then just say what the reference is. But of course, you got Count Dracula in there. The werewolf was kind of similar to Lawrence Talbert in The Wolfman. So Sheen is kind of like that reference in a way. But he, he could be also a reference to like a 1980s film called Teen Wolf which I've never seen. So that's quite a few references right there, but there are more left to go. So let's continue on this nightmare in Retroville. After Carl cuts himself with a candy wrapper, making it the very first time I actually saw blood in a cartoon, he starts to get very strange tastes for more blood. And of course, he references Count Dracula's Children of the Night as he transforms into a bat and flies away. Sheen figures this out and actually wishes he would be one, but of course, Jimmy didn't do that as his monster maker basically altered the DNAs of his friends, and if I could put this in English, Carl's a real vampire, and now Sheen's a werewolf due, due to a full moon. So now that Jimmy is basically scurrying out of here, we see basically, well, the other parts of his friends being turned into monsters. We see Cindy, who calls herself her costume is basically named Buffy um, Muffy the Vampire Annihilator, which is a reference to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Of course, she gets hypnotized to ask for a blood type as Carl takes a bite out of her, and she's a vampire as well. Lippy's a fashion model. Name your pick. I don't really care on fashion models. And Sheen, of course, makes so many references to different types of meat that Gordon Ramsay would be impressed. Of course, he takes a big bite out of her, and she turns into a werewolf. The f and Jimmy's dad, the f as a Frankenstein monster, of course, falls in love with his mother, um, who, of course, is the Bride of Frankenstein, dressed as the Bride of Frankenstein. Not as the Bride of Frankenstein. If she was, she'd be screaming. Of course, Jimmy gets away from his best friends by different ways, basically garlic and the silver house as well. And there's a lot of other references to other ways of the monsters here. He looks up vampires, and his teacher, Miss Fowl, <laughs> was married to a werewolf, so she knows werewolves pretty well as well. Hey, good God. Is there any... Is there no more references in this entire show? What? <laughs> wait. Oh, wait. There's more! As if I hadn't been punished enough. Let's end this. Timmy himself, pretty much, well, what do we ex expect here, sees a complete monster fight, which is, again, another reference to the monster bash that came in the 1940s, where all the classic monsters started fighting one another. So, the monsters basically team up against the whole town of Retroville, but Retroville found a way to actually, well, stop them. Of course, they have all the stuff that basically they could stop of monsters with. Vamp, garlic, fire, silver teaspoons. So, how is Jimmy going to actually stop two vampires, two werewolves, and a reanimated corpse? Oh, that's simple. 
basically turning himself into an octopus. An octopus that, you know what, that reference, I'll just put the picture up there and maybe I'll put the title, the name of the movie, and you can go watch it yourself, but I don't freaking care, we're almost done. So, so he transforms everyone back into the monsters, into, into humans again. But of course, they don't have candy anymore, since they turned into monsters and discarded all their candy. So the ending basically goes with Jimmy basically ding-donging each house with his tentacle arms, and the episode ends. Thank God it ended. Ugh. But I'm still a huge fan of this show. It's just the references just drive me crazy. I never knew there was this many. I'm probably missing some, so tell me in the comments if I'm missing any here, and then you could tagline it for me. But, yeah, I still love Jimmy Neutron, and I still love all the episodes. Despite it being a very out dated CG computer television animation, it still is entertaining because it had good story, good action, and pretty good characters too. Some of them stereotypical, others legendary. So I, I clearly can't hate this show. I can't even hate this episode. I love it so much, but the references just make my head spin. So... At least tomorrow it's going to be a special one because we're going to be dealing with another Halloween special, but not from my childhood because we're going straight to the 1970s. Oddly enough, the 1970s, but there's one little doll, one little doll, actually two dolls or three, helping one pumpkin that actually couldn't smile. But I'm going to try to keep mine after this mess. See you tomorrow. Truly, go to truth.